Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Peace and blessings upon you all. Dear students, today uh, we learn about a new, uh, yet another uh, software solution for critical section problem, what's called as a Lamport Bakery algorithm. Okay? We have seen the Pearson's algorithm and Decker's solution. These two guys are work if you have two processes. Okay? But in the real world, we see uh, we not only have the processes, but we have the threads as well. A lot of threads, a lot of processes work together, and we need to have a synchro We, we uh, have the error synchronization problem, and we're gonna fix it. Okay, so this uh, Lamport Big algorithm uh, it was done by the Dr. Leslie Lamport, as you can see in a picture. Um, you can see it's uh, his videos on the YouTube, also. Uh, he, he is a uh, he's a you know kind of guy who has got a, a Turing award as well. So a lot of work done in computer science. So he 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 has uh, uh, worked out this algorithm for mutual exclusion if we have multiple threads. If the threads are greater than two, if it was uh, like uh, we have only two processes or threads, then uh, uh, Peterson's algorithm or Decker's algorithm uh, would have worked fine. Uh, but uh, we need to improve. Uh, if we have uh, actually we need to uh, apply the mutual exclusion uh, so that there will be no race condition okay when we have multiple threads so what he uses is called the bakery algorithm why he's called as a bakery algorithm because uh, you know we have um, one second because in bakery or you must have seen in banks uh, there is a sort of sort of a counter you know when uh, some customer comes in okay is given some sort of a token and uh, whatever the token number is say for example at that time when he came was a token 100 so he will be given 101 token number okay uh, and when uh, there will be a display on it if uh, when it hits the 101 it's your turn say for another customer on his 102 and here we are only 80 uh, on the counter is 80 that means 80th customer is being served so you have to wait unless uh, until your number comes on a screen this is uh, you can see uh, in banks uh, or in uh, I mean in uh, railway reservation ticketings and all those there are always these counters or even you know you go to some doctor they give you tokens and when your token hits on a counter you, it's your turn so it's, it's simple as uh, as you could see because in India uh, perhaps we don't have uh, in a bakery shops these kind of uh, things but um, but in KFC uh, you know uh, there you can see these kind of uh, you know uh, token systems so whatever it is it, it, it what when the customer comes you are given a token so if at that time token highest token is 101 so you have to increase one to it increment one to it that is 102 that will be your token and you have to wait for the uh, for your token to go for shopping okay uh, uh, or in other words uh, you have to wait for if you're a process if it, you, it's not even to if, if when your t turn comes then and only then you can access the critical section okay so critical section can be accessed only by those processes who have the minimum tokens but here uh, we need to keep in mind that if two customers come simultaneously okay uh, two customers come simultaneously because uh, we have a common sense that if two, even two customers come uh, simultaneously, someone who assigns the token uh, will give, say, 102 to one and 103 to other guy, right? But in a computer science, um, here, this token generation will also uh, be like a critical section. So we have to lock it also before incrementing, okay, and assigning it to the customer. But we, we are not going to do that because it will make it complex. So we assume that, yeah, there may be a chance, a very rare one, but the two process comes in simultaneously and uh, try to generate the token. So if someone has a 102 and another guy comes in, he also has a 102. What will happen is when a new customer comes in, say two customer comes in, okay, and they see 101 is the highest token. So when they try to generate, they both generate 102. So we have can have a situation when both customers have the same token, okay. So in that case, we see uh, uh, because there is a tie, there is a conflict in the token. Now who should give? Because uh, the the guy with the lesser token should be served but in this case what will happen is the guy with has a lower process ID because each every process has a ID okay and that's unique 
uh, and the guy which has the process which has or a thread which has uh, that ID because thread also has a thread ID uh, or process a process ID which is a smaller in that number can access the critical section if there is a tie so this is uh, done by like this we say a comma b this rule we apply is less we, do, we don't say like a is less than b then uh, a should be done and b should wait but th there is a second thing called b uh, i'm saying that that means uh, it should be less than c comma d what does this mean is we have to keep this thing in mind that we have a two arguments here a comma b should be less than c comma d that which is equivalent to saying uh, a is less than C if A is less than C we don't need to chuck the B and D okay this A and C is a token okay this is a token we're talking about the token and if token A is lesser than C A should be served C should wait but or if A is equal to C now there is a tie if A is equal to C then and only then we think about the B okay and the B and D here are the IDs the guy with the lower ID okay then B should be less than D this will be surely uh, either the B is lesser or D is lesser because IDs are unique so one ID will be lesser differently than the other ID so there will be no conflict in that so if there is a tie uh, when both uh, have come come together and taking the token same token A is equal to C then B should be less than D so we have an, a condition like this A comma B less than C comma D which actually means that A is less than C we are done with this condition then we don't need to chuck b and d but if a is or i'm saying this is equivalent this statement and this one is equivalent if a is less than c no problem but if a is not less than c that means a is equal to c in that case we chuck the b b should be less than d and only and only then this process a can access the critical section and c should wait or if it's not so b is greater than d then c should access the critical section and a should wait okay now let's try to see the uh, the algorithm the original uh, bakery algorithm and uh, then explain it okay then I can explain it okay this is our uh, implementation of the algorithm okay before discussing the algorithm let us uh, run, run an example okay what we are talking about here so for example uh, we have processes uh, p0 p1 p2 and p3 okay now what we have is uh, we have an array okay uh, number array we call it as a number this is a number array um, this is a shared number array of integers so if we have an uh, it will have a 0 to n minus 1 so if we got a for example 1 2 3 4 processes so we got 0 this is for p0 this is for p1 this is for p2 and this is for p3 so 0 to n minus 1 okay uh, because if n is 4 4 minus 1 is 3 so 0 to 3 0 1 2 3 this is our number array so what a number array we use it for is to have a token when the process comes in the token is given and that will be stored uh, in its box corresponding box p1's token is stored in a p1's box p2's in p2's box p3 in p3's box so whosoever comes first it will be given some token say for example p0 comes first or p1 comes first or p2 comes first or whosoever comes first it's it will be given some token okay say for example p2 comes in uh, first okay so we give it a token say for example one okay now we will uh, try to see uh, who has the maximum in the box because whose box is maximum say for example now a p2 comes in so we will scan the whole array and try and see who has the maximum number is this time around we have only one uh, box filled so we'll see it is a one and we'll add one to it so become two so it will be two now if say for example p3 comes in now okay now we have to see who is the maximum okay we have to who is the maximum so what will the maximum doing so there will be a method called maximum or max i'm saying or maximum or whatever you call it okay uh, in short let, let me call it max and max will be seeing uh, the whole array say for example number uh, of array of 0 comma or number array of 1 and so on okay up to n minus 1 who is the maximum out of all this okay it will check is this maximum this 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 out of them who is the maximum okay so 
whosoever is a maximum, say for example, 2 is a maximum and it will add 1 to that. So whosoever is a maximum, it will add 1 to that. So maximum will see who is maximum out of these boxes and add 1 to that. Say this time around, if we have this and this, so maximum is 2. So add 1 to that is 3, it will be assigned to the P3. And similarly, P0 comes then, so then it will be maximum out of all of these is a 3 and add 1 to that is a 4. So this is the maximum doing. Okay? Okay. We, we may have a situation uh, when uh, what we do is we uh, the two process may come simultaneously and they may choose the same token. This can also happen. So for example, uh, P0, P1, P2, and P3. Okay? Say for example, P1 came first, it is going to have 1. And now P2 and P3 came simultaneously, so they will see which is the max. Both of these will run this code. Who is the who is the max? Maximum is a one this time, and add one to that. This guy also adds one to that. This guy also adds one to that. So it will be a kind of problem, okay? Because it will fail the whole mutual exclusion. Because when we are gonna give critical section to only that guy, which is a, a minimum. So for example, P1 will be served first because it has a minimum out of them. So it will be it will access the critical section. Now, out of, after that, the two and the two, they are they are tied. Both can access P2 and P3. Both can access the critical section. So, we, to avoid that situation, uh, we have that A comma B should be less than C comma D. That means if uh, there is a tie in a token, A and C has a tie, then we're gonna chuck who is lesser, B or D. If B is lesser, B should uh, get the uh, critical section. If D is lesser, D should access the critical section. So that will have a mutual exclusion in that. Okay, that's why we have this condition. Now A and C will be the tokens in the ma in this, this uh, number array. Okay, whatever the token that process has, and B and D are the IDs uh, of that process which is running. Okay, and the, those IDs are unique, so we don't have to worry about. This is one thing. Okay. Now it may be uh, one, one situation come in here, uh, the last situation which I uh, will talk and then we we'll see the algorithm that I am say for example I was uh, trying to see who was uh, who is the lower so that I can uh, because I have to access the critical section okay I have to access the critical section uh, maybe they, 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 when I access the critical section I have to uh, see a couple of conditions okay let me first change the pen. Me make it a black. Okay, what I'm saying is firstly, uh, in the beginning, when uh, there is uh, no process P0, P1, P2, P3, the all of them will be zero. They need to be all zero. Or when a process is done, say for example P1 is done, it will make it zero. So zero will tell us that this process is out of contention. So th that, that is the indication of a zero. Either the process has not come or the process has done. The critical section so we should not worry about it it is done okay in, in the bakery a, 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 the, the process has taken the bakery so we have no contention with it okay simple as it is so we can have a zero in a beginning or when you are done you you, you got to make your number array uh, whatever the I uh, whatever the process box is that will run by the index okay so zero one two three so if I say p1 the index is one okay so we, we have a loop variable say for example i i will be one at that time so number of i we have got to put zero in that if that process is finished this is one thing second thing so if i have to say for example i have another situation like this say i have a situation the tokens are being generated say p0 p1 p2 p3 now this guy has taken a token of one so i got three two say for example four so this is a situation okay so who will be given the critical section? So who can access the critical section is the P1. But how will it know? Okay, say for example P1 comes in, it won't access the critical section, it has a time slice P1. So everybody will can have a, their own time slices. And now P1 has its time slice. Okay, and we know uh, obviously that it is the lowest, it has a lowest token, it should access the critical section. But how can the P1 decide that I should access the critical section? So this can be done because what it has to do is it has to run a loop from 0 to n minus 1. Okay, it has to run a loop and it has to chuck if anyone has a lesser than me the token. Okay, so it will chuck 1 with the 4 with this P0. Uh, P1 will tell P0 is your token lesser than me? 
uh, it says no it's not so it will ask itself is your you are is your it will ask itself also that is my token lesser than you it's not lesser it's equal so it will go forward uh, is it lesser no is it lesser no so it can access it say now p1 has not come it is the p0 slice okay it is the p0 slice uh, or p2's time slice say for example it's a uh, p2's time slice okay now p2 is 3 now in this case p2 will again run a loop from 0 to n minus 1 so it will ask every box of a number array it will try to chuck every box of a number array that if anybody is lesser than me because that if anybody is a lesser token than me then that process uh, should access the critical section not me so firstly it will ask the p4 p0 are you lesser than me it's not because it's four is uh, greater than them before p0 p, p2 should access so it should not worry about but maybe other guys are lesser so it will ask p1 is or lesser oh he says yeah i'm lesser so it should wait uh, it should wait it should not access because uh, some process like p1 is lesser okay so it will it will it will spin lock so it will you know uh, some, what's called a busy wait it will busy wait uh, until the p1 doesn't become the zero until this doesn't become zero when p1 comes in it makes at the end it's zero then it's done only then it can come out of this loop okay then 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 uh, after coming out of this loop it will not start running but it will start asking other boxes other uh, processes that are you lesser than me or not if no process is left lesser than this process okay then and only then this can access do you understand same is uh, situation with the p0 uh, say for example p1 is done so p0 will talk the um, p1 is zero so it will not worry because if p if p1 if some box is a zero okay i should not talk to that because that is done or that is not present so the, it's out of contention so i will talk to the p2 are you lesser than me oh it is say for instance it's a three it is so i should not better do you so i'm waiting in a busy loop until this p2 becomes false no, sorry zero okay when it is zero that means it is done then i can ask the other guy are you done but it is two so i can't access two has a minimum token two can access so i gotta wait i, I gonna again wait in a simple uh, loop okay uh, in a busy wait loop until the p3 becomes zero when it is done it is done everybody is done uh, in this case uh, or some other processes are there which is higher than me i don't worry about that because if it is higher than me i should be doing so if all other processes there is no process left lesser than me i can access a critical section okay now a situation may arise okay in this in this scenario that we have may have a scenario like this let us have a scenario clean scenario like this now we have the process p0 p1 p2 and p3 so the situation is like this we got a tokens like one two three four like this for example they have to take the tokens now uh, process uh, p2 is trying to see uh, is uh, anybody lesser than me in this because it has to see if anybody is lesser than me i'm gonna wait if uh, there is no process uh, lesser than me left then i can do it okay now say for example um there was another process say for example p3 p4 or p5 and so on there may be other process also and p4 has just come when p2 was trying to see everybody that already lesser than me maybe p4 is just choosing that number choosing that token which i'm talking about here this token uh, everybody cho choose the token using this uh, max uh, method where we see who is the maximum out of the box and add one to that maybe when you are asking when p3 is asking p4 are you less than me and p4 is busy choosing a number okay it is trying to do this line of code okay so i should not disturb it i should wait for it until this maximum uh, this max function is done by the p4 when p4 is done with the max number it has chosen number five i can now compare if it is uh, the moment i chuck say p2 with the p4 are lesser than me i'm asking it but maybe it's not uh, sorry maybe it, 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 at that moment it is it's trying to choose that token so i should wait until it uh, you know choose that token so what i do is therefore i have a lock uh, on this max okay called as choosing okay it's also an array choosing of i i make it uh, firstly true 
okay if i'm this time if i is say for example this p4 i was talking trying to do, see uh, before i uh, you know um, before any process chooses a number okay chooses a token using the max function it makes its its choosing i as a true and then when it chooses a number it makes its choosing of i equals to false so what i am trying to tell you is like this with this array we also have a boolean array called choosing and this is a boolean okay <coughs> excuse me so this is a p4 same as p0 p1 p2 p3 p4 and so on when p4 is trying to choose a token so it's not yet uh, done choosing a token it it want to run uh, the max method okay and try to see who is the maximum plus one to that and it's trying to do that before that it will make its choosing of i equals to true so it makes its choosing true okay and then it is done uh, uh, by choosing a token so it was in the process of choosing a token it is done this line of code is done it understood who is the bigger and added one to that say it was four and now it is five so it will put five into this okay and now it will release choosing it's choosing of i is equal to false after that it will say choosing of i equals to false let me make it false this will help us when we were uh, trying to see if anybody is lesser than me so if for example p3 was trying to tell p4 or less than me before it asks p4 it will see the choosing variable if choosing of that p4 is true okay so p3 is trying to see who is lesser than me so p3 is trying to ask p4 are lesser than me but before accessing its value that is 5 in this case maybe it was not 5 it was in the middle of uh, choosing that number so i should wait p3 should wait how p3 will wait it will see its choosing if in a, it's in p4's choosing because it's corresponding okay choosing a boolean array if there is a true that means uh, it is not done with the uh, with choosing a number so it should wait it will wait p3 will wait so when the choosing becomes false then only then you can see or lesser than me or not do you understand okay so if you are not getting properly just revise this thing now we go to the algorithm maybe this will help again this will uh, this will be now crystal clear right i guess we have firstly a choosing okay this is a boolean array okay and minus one this is a boolean array okay uh, this can take true and false then we got a num array again zero and minus one i would say integer array where we can have a tokens every process will choose its token so before a process say any process which comes in has an index say that is i so ith process p0 zero, zero process p1 one i is one for p2 i is two and so on okay i first make before choosing a token say for example p0 p1 p2 p3 p4 i'm saying these are processes p2 first comes in okay now or p0 first comes in for simplicity's sake or any process who comes first no problem who has the arrival time the first its i will be zero whosoever comes first say for example p1 comes first so before it will choose a token so this is a token right uh, in the number of the token before it will choose a token <coughs> it has to make its choosing this is the choosing array and this is the number array okay this is its num number array. this is the choosing array before choosing its uh, token here it will make first this guy as a true okay and then choose a number obviously there is nothing because in initially there, it will be all zeros initially it will be all zeros uh, so nobody is uh, maximum uh, it's so it will have a zero only max is zero so zero plus one is one so it will put up uh, sorry i was talking about p0 okay it's p0 i just said p1 now i switch it back to p0 uh, anyways say for example p0 came first okay so it will have a one as a num, num array but before that it will make the p uh, it's it's choosing as true then after it is done with this line of code line number five it will go for line number six where it makes its choosing false right now uh, now uh, this thing will be done by all other codes okay say for example after the p2 comes in it will make first it true and see who is the maximum one is the maximum so plus one to that that's a two two will go here okay let me change my pen uh, let's make it a little different 
Let me make it red. Okay. So uh, what I'm saying, yeah, it will make it true, two, and then uh, after making choosing a token, it will make its false. Okay. Then maybe P1 came in, so it will obviously make it a max uh, is a two plus one that is three, and first it makes it uh, true and then three and then false. Similarly, P3 comes in. Say for example, P3 comes in. He says, "Who is the max? Max is three. Three plus one is four. Four. Uh, sorry, it is uh, first. It makes it true. Uh, three plus one is four. Four as a token. Then it will make it false, right? Similarly, uh, here, say P4 comes in. So obviously, it's gonna make it five and first it true five and then make it a false. Okay, and so on. But it's not necessarily that everybody comes in and uh, stuck on line five. This is simplicity sake I've shown you. Maybe you are talking about three other processes that have yet not yet come, or other processes have not yet done this, right? So we have all kind of scenarios. Then whatever it is now, uh, any process who wanna now access the critical section. Okay, if you are trying to access a critical section, um, that is here, this line of code you wanna do line number 13 you want to access the critical section is that code which will access your critical resource or something which is a critical section this uh, is non preemptible code which you want to run before doing that every process <coughs> runs this loop that's what I said you have to run a loop to check if anybody is lesser than me but before that okay I will try to see that if choosing of that process which I am I am talking about if that is true if choosing of j when i say while choosing of j that means while choosing of j is equal to true okay if that is true that means if it is choosing a number okay so i was trying to see say for example uh, i'm talking about this this process and i was trying to chuck it with some p0 and p0 is yet uh, has made it true it, it has just come the moment i was chucking it has just come it has made the choosing of its i as true then i should wait so that's why it is doing nothing it's waiting in this loop the moment when you are done with the choosing, you have done a, and you have chosen a number. So you have chosen a number, say one, or whatever it is. Uh, say for example, uh, I will make it a new. Say this is my numeric and this is my choosing. Now I was talking about P0, P1, P2, P3, and P4. So P2 came in, so it will make it a true, and then say for example one, and uh, now it is false, and so on. The moment now I have to see other guys. Say for example, P0, I was talking with the P0. P0 has just come, so it has made it a true. So if it has made it a true, I will be stuck in this uh, loop. Okay, I will be waiting. I will be doing nothing. I will be waiting until uh, the P0 cho chooses a token that is two, and I will make it now the false. The moment it becomes false, it comes out of it. Okay, and now it will see if other, any other guy. Okay, before it will see any other guys lesser than me, it will see first if it is, you know, there's an and condition, if number of j, that, that box which I am trying to see, if that is not equal to zero, okay, if that is not equal to zero, if that is zero, okay, uh, what should I do if that is zero, if that is the process is zero, that means it is done, and uh, I should not be chucking uh, that number, right, I should skip this loop, because I, if that is zero, uh, that means if I'm checking with this guy and it's a zero, that means it is done or it is not yet come. So I, it's out of contention. So I will skip this loop. I will go back to the for loop and I will increment the J and J will go to the next box and try to see with this box is this lesser than me or not. So before seeing is it lesser than me, I have to see if that is uh, not equal to zero. If that is zero, then I should not be doing this. this because this and condition, both of the conditions should be true. Then only then it will uh, work. The while loop will work. Now say for example it was uh, not zero. It is true. It was not zero. So this was say for example three, and mine was one. Okay. So I have to see if here uh, the number i a comma this is a situation where I say a comma b should be lesser than c comma d. This this scenario. Number of j should be less than number of i. That means the number of j is the process which I'm chucking the box of that process which I'm chucking, and number of i is the process which uh, is the current process which, which is chucking okay uh, so which is trying to have uh, which has a time share okay which which is trying to access the critical section is the ith process and jth is a loop which I'm trying to see all processes j0 j1 j2 and so on 
if number of j that means the other process which i'm chucking is lesser than my process number of i then i should do nothing simple as it is but there may be tie i told you the tokens may be tie if a number of j say for example it's also two the tokens are two two say for example okay then i will chuck the process id that's j versus i okay the, that process is id if that is lesser than my process id i should still wait okay so i can come out of this while loop only if the process i am chucking okay is not lesser than me okay if if i am lesser than that process so i should not wait rather i should come out of this while loop and try to see other box because j will increment it will see other box right and when it see other box uh, for that box again the same thing if it if the, uh, that box is choosing is correct that means it's trying to see trying to have a token I should wait if it is not if it is false then I should see firstly if it is not zero if it is zero I should not uh, worry about it I should come out of the loop and go for the next box okay but if it is not zero it is something some token is there I will chuck its token this is the token I will chuck its token uh, with my token if its token is lesser I should be waiting on that okay I should do nothing I will be waiting and waiting and waiting uh, but if there is a tie there may be a tie sometimes then i will see the process id whose process id is lesser have a lesser pro um, a process id will have a higher priority that will access the critical section similarly i will try to see with all other guys until i don't see any process lesser than me okay then only then i will access a critical section okay that process can access the critical section and after finishing critical section what it do is it will make its number i equals to zero that means i am done okay out of contention so you are out of contention so other processes may not consider you because when you are number of i is zero uh, this will happen uh, this will be false this condition will be false here and you will not run this while loop rather you go to the next box j is equal to j will increment and you try to see the next box and so on okay hopefully um, you got all these things together if not watch it again and you will get it so it's time to say bye bye and this is the end of this segment okay see you in the next lecture until then ma salama